Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... Uh, Jerry Grayson of Compare Publishing. And what are we talking about today? Well, I'd like to talk to you about uh, my latest endeavor, which is called uh, The Godson Agenda, which is a postmodern uh, mythic role-playing game um, that I will be kickstarting sometime in January 2022. All right. And this is your, your first follow-up from uh, Terra Oblivion. Uh, yes. The latest Kickstarter uh, that I've been working on or the latest project uh, since Terra Oblivion and since Orun and all of that stuff. This is the thing that I've been working on in the background for probably 18 months now. Um, oh, wow. With the new edition of the very first game that I ever published, which is God's an Agenda. Um, okay. Back in the olden days, you know, <laughs> looking around, it looks like if you did a 360, where you're at could be where I'm at because of all the books and stuff in the background. <laughs> if you just did a 360 around this entire room, I'm sure you're like sitting right over there, and we're just pretending we're in different rooms. <laughs> hmm. That'd be exactly. A... <laughs> oh man, That'd I wish so... I could reach this way, and on your side, you see like a hand come in. <laughs> That would be the that, that, that would be a great idea. That'd be a great like April Fool's uh, yeah. type of video. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna exactly. save that for 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 the future. Uh, right. But but um, God's an agenda. Uh, what what is it about exactly? Okay, basically, God's an agenda is if you had the power of a god or a godlike being, what would you do with it? And so, a lot of games uh, take that conceit and they just do your standard superhero game where you stop bank robberies and stuff like that. But with God's an agenda, basically, um, you're trying to change the world for the better. And so you're not dealing with, you know, like the micro problems. You're dealing with huge problems like income disparity, you know, famine, uh, making things better on the planet. I mean, if, if you had a character who was as powerful as Thor or even Captain America, would you spend all day fighting you know, Hydra or, you know, aim as they're like, you know, doing their little, you know, things, or would you, you know, try to make substantive change uh, on planet earth. Um, and that's basically what God's an agenda is. So it's basically, you know, a game of just postmodern mythology, you know, of these beings who have, you know, this godlike power. And this is the third iteration of the game. Um, the first being uh, my first published work back in 2002. In the olden days, the Halcyon uh, time of role playing. Um, and since then, it's basically changed and morphed. And at this point now, I think I have the tools, meaning um, not necessarily, you know, just the technology to make it happen, but the basically I have the the tools to actually bring this thing to life the way I intended to bring it to life originally. So um, it functions better. It, 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 it runs better. Um, this right here is basically my um, copy that I used to basically edit and look through because it's hard reading stuff on screen sometimes. So if you put it together like this, you can kind of see it. So once I do do the Kickstarter, people will know that the game is about 90% done. Um, it's gone through quite a few iterations. That's, you know, the latest version or, you know, the version that I'm doing right now. Um, actually, I could probably show you the D6 version that we released back in 2004. This is the version that most people remember. Um, and in fact, if you really wanted, I could show you the original edition, which uh, kind of kickstarted it all uh, back in 2002. But um a little bit about the game. It uses a uh, 2D10 uh, for its task resolution. It's built on uh, the Omega engine, which uh, I used to build uh, Hellas, Worlds of Sun and Stone, uh, and also Atlantis, uh, the Second Age. So it uses that same basic system building on top of that, except this one's a bit bigger because, you know, you're dealing with, you know, godlike beings. You know, people can throw stuff into the sun and, you know, move mountains. So the system has been scaled up to deal with... Uh, you know, characters like that. Um, and all of this stuff you could actually see at the website at comparepublishing.com. If you just go there, look for God's and Agenda and click on there, you'll be able to see what, you know, a little bit of the artwork for the game, um, some of the mechanics and sample characters, um, all sorts of stuff that are the, that's already in there. Oh, wow. It sounds like 
almost like a, a superhero game, but you start out pretty much like the war Superman level kind of capabilities. Right. Is that is that correct? Sort of. I mean, you can play it because there's different power levels in the game. So you can play it at different power levels, uh, ranging from, you know, power level one uh, up to power level 10. The default is power level three. And that'll get you a character, if we're using comic book and superhero terms, probably somewhere in the range of like, you know, um, you know, your Avengers or, uh, you know, low end Justice League or something like that. Um, but it scales up. And unlike a lot of games where they always want the sweet spot to be like, I'm going to play the X-Men characters. It's like, why limit yourself? It's like, you know, it's like, these are like, you know, these godlike beings and, you know, it granted it's fun playing Nightwing, but sometimes, you know, you just want to play a uh, silver surfer and uh, God's an agenda will allow you to do it. Um, and it's not uh, predicated on keeping the status quo. Um, and that's one of the big things about the game is that the game tries to make you move and do things proactively. Mm -hmm. So you're not just keeping the status quo, even though you know the status quo is not working for a lot of people. You're not trying to do that. It's It hews closer to probably planetary or the authority as opposed to the Avengers or Justice League, mm -hmm. where these people are dynamic. They're dynamic uh, agents of change trying to make things happen on planet Earth as opposed to just kind of sitting back and reacting to someone poisoning the water supply, which you can do in God's an agenda. It's just, <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, just imagine uh, any of the myths that you, you know, uh, you know, you read in school or they, they just don't sit around just doing mundane things. They're actively doing something to, you know, change the world or to leave their mark for good or ill. Um, and that's what God's an agenda tries to do. So who are, what would you say are the, the villains? Like I, 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 I love the authority. Um, uh, Miracle Man, um, uh, Alan Moore's works that dealt with those same themes. Um, so should I assume it's it's like you fight against maybe other beings of power, maybe even governments? Um, um, yeah. Well, basically, the uh, the title "Gods and Agenda" is basically a piece of the game. Um, it's about social engineering on an epic scale. Basically, the "Gods and Agenda" is what these aliens come to Earth to do is basically engineer us so they can conquer us. So they essentially show up, uh, set themselves up as gods, and basically have us conquer ourselves. And this happened on Earth 6,000 years ago when a prison ship crashed on Earth, and uh, the aliens inside decided to use the precepts of the gods and agenda to protect themselves. And that's where you get all of these mythic beings from like, you know, the bygone era. And one of the cool aspects of the game is you can play in different epochs. So you could play God's and Agenda in the default setting, uh, which is modern times, or you could play it uh, in the Age of Heroes in, you know, 1452 uh, BC or even further back. Um, so you can play it as, you know, let's say, for instance, you wanted to play as members of a, a King Arthur's court um, and just ramp that up. That's an epoch in the game. There's a, 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 an epoch that is basically the Age of Discovery um, or the so-called Age of Discovery since nothing really got discovered so much as you know seen by western europeans but mm. uh there's, there's basically you know you could play in that era um and the game lends itself to being able to do these things it's it's really flexible in that sense that you are playing you know a godlike being in a particular time and what did you do in that time to make it your own um so you know you could you could play you know the trojan war if you want um and have achilles there with you know uh, you know, your character who happens to be uh, Hermes or, you know, uh, Hera or, you know, some, you know, Sumerian god, you know, Marduk or something like that uh, involved in it. Um, and to answer your question about like the adversaries, some of the adversaries have used the gods and agenda to set themselves up. Like, for instance, the world serpent, um, which is not a literal serpent. It's basically a corporation that encircles the earth. Uh, run by, you know, superhuman beings who are trying to, you know, impose their agendas. Um, kind of like the the, uh, the Void or Industries, I think they're called, from the boys. Uh, yep. You've got like these mega corporations, but, you know, what are they really trying to do? It's world domination. It's world domination by pacifying you with, you know, cell phones and, you know, uh, you know, 
Boba Fett TV shows and stuff like that when they're really just basically trying to take over the planet. So it's like, uh, you know, Disney could be, um, you know, an agenda that, you know, you could actually uh, go up against because every group, every set of players makes a pantheon. So you would sit there with your group and you guys would, as a group, make your pantheon, which is your super team. And uh, from there, you set your agendas. Like, what do we want to do? As opposed to, well, we've made our super team. What do we do now? You make an agenda. You know, we're going to do this in the city. We're going to clean up the city. Or we're just going to take over the city and make it better ourselves, however we see fit. And then from there, you know, you can scale up your agendas. You can do a regional agenda. You can do a national agenda. You can do a global or cosmic agenda. Um, So the game really lends itself to being proactive and to try to do something as opposed to just, you know, headbutts and face punches and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, a lot of the games lend themselves to. Mm. Um, A lot of games talk about doing stuff like that, but none of them really have mechanics that allow you to do it. Um, Where the focus of God's agenda is that you can play the game in what is called either uh, saga play or epic play. Saga play is what you know you would normally do around the game table. And epic play is when you're like, well, um, we're getting ready to do something ridiculously awesome. Uh, you know, we're going to basically uh, put solar power on the western coast of America. You know, and that would be your agenda. You know, we're going to give people free power. Because um, why wouldn't Reed Richards do that? Why wouldn't he do that? But he never does in the comic because, again, they always have to go back to the status quo. Luckily, I don't have those same restrictions, and we can do whatever we want. So it's a power fantasy, like all role-playing games, but a power fantasy where you try to do productive and good work for uh, the people around you. Excellent. Excellent. So the the book itself, uh, what does it consist of when it comes to like uh, uh, chapters? What information exactly in there and how is it how is it uh, laid out? Well, you've got uh, it's laid out. Well, it's got a really extensive introductory uh, section that kind of tells you to. You know, basically be good human beings and to uh, (laughs) play good with other uh, people. So you've got all that in there. All your uh, safety tools are in there. Character uh, creation, which. is point based, but also uses kind of a life path uh, to kind of get you started. So there's a, a life path that uh, helps you get involved in the different factions that are in the gods and agenda. Uh, from there, there's an entire chapter called agendas, which uh, teaches you how to basically create your agenda and how to implement an agenda in the game. Then you've got you know your power section, which is ridiculously extensive. Um, and that's one of the things that uh, was probably the easiest to write and the hardest to write at the same time because it's gone through so many iterations and fine tuning just because as you play test, you realize that, you know, some stuff that you wrote at like, you know, three in the morning absolutely does not make sense in the light of day. <laughs> um, the section on creating your artifacts or, you know, what you would call a gadget, um, you know, your artifacts of power, you um, Then, you know, your system, game master, and your adversary stuff. And that's just the core book. Um, What we have planned is a a book of uh, epochs where you can set, you know, your pantheon in different time periods of play and, you know, the different adversaries you would see there. There's the book of pantheons that um, we're working on concurrently with this book because there's just so much information from, you know, the other editions of the book that we're, you know, just basically rearranging. Um, where you will see the different pantheons and what these pantheons' agendas are and how they can work uh, either with your pantheon or work cross-purposes or against. Um, So there's stuff that, you know, I have planned because I've uh, revisited this game so many times in the last 20 years now. Wow, it's been like 20 years that, you know, we've played it and then, you know, you create some stuff for it. Uh, You write a new edition of it that, you know, you put on the back burner um for a few years like this game should have come out or been it's been in the works since i worked on uh the seven c ifri game so you see yourself do you see this happening you mentioned in january next year yes well, which well january yeah. 2022 i should say but this might come up by yes, this year exactly which is you know right around the corner um 
So yes, yeah, so I've got the Kickstarter and actually that would actually be really handy if people could go and basically get on the notifications to be notified when it goes live. Um, I'm really aiming to get to like at least 300 notifications before I go live with it. And right now behind the scenes, I'm kind of fine tuning the Kickstarter just so it, it works, it's elegant and it's easy. And um, just because, you know, cause Kickstarter is going through some weirdness right now. And uh, I'm trying to mitigate some of the shenanigans and just make this thing simple, easy and not scary. Like there's some Kickstarters where like, you're like, I don't really know what I'm even backing anymore because there's so much like extra noise coming at you from, you know, every side. I just kind of want to give you something where once you pledge and you push the button, you are completely comfortable in what you get. Um, I plan on putting up a 50 page sample of the book mm. just to give proof of concept uh, that, you know, it's not just some pie in the sky idea that, you know, it's like, eh, I got an idea for a game. If you guys give me X amount of money, you know, I'll start writing it. It's like, nope, it's already written. It's uh, done uh, pretty much. It's just now we're just going back and tweaking stuff like today I was, you know, just editing, you know, the um, agenda rules here. Um, and if you look at our Twitter account, you'll see all sorts of uh, artwork that we release periodically from the game. Um, so, you know, it is, the game will exist in one way or another, even if like, you know, the Kickstarter tanked, eventually this game would come out. It might, you know, be, um, you know, me in my, uh, bedroom like uh, folding papers and taking them down to kinko to be stapled but uh <laughs> the game will exist all right well um our viewers out there uh, i'm gonna take your suggestion um if you have any ideas that you want some stretch goals ideas for this kickstarter if you think that'd be oh. great that won't won't sink the ship uh yeah. let, let's know in the comments below and i'll, I'll share it with jerry after after yeah absolutely because yeah i i need to uh because yeah when i think about stuff it's all meat and potatoes it's always this is what I need to, this is the X amount of money I need to get this part of the project done. And I'm not thinking about, you know, jammies or, um, you know, like the, I don't know, potato salad recipe for uh, God's and Agenda. It's just all about the game uh, as it stands. But if you guys are clever and you come up with some stuff that, you know, would work, then I'm, I'm all about it. Hmm. But, you know, I guess we'll see. All right, and I'll put all the links in the description below. Awesome. Uh, Jerry, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about this Kickstarter. It sounds fantastic. I know I'm very intrigued. I love that. Oh. I love that really postmodern take on superheroes, and I love that that now we have the system to really explore that. To our viewers, I uh, thank you for watching. Uh, stay safe out there, and uh, again, thank you, Jerry, for joining us. Oh, thank and you. and uh, hopefully your new year, everyone's new year, will turn out well. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>